boldness is a muscle that you build just like anything else um, by taking bold action. And, and you know, uh, early on, I like to tell the secret. A lot of people think, well, I would be bolder if I were more confident. That's why, you know, the introvert is saying, well, I'm not confident of doing anything but these things I'm comfortable with. Hmm. The reality is it doesn't take confidence to be bold. It takes boldness to build your confidence. So uh, we were off air and talking about uh, you, boldness, being super bold, all that other kind of jazz. And there was this lesson and you said specifically that your lessons were in becoming shy. And I'd love to hear about uh, the impact that your parents had on you uh, as far as what that means. Yeah. And it's really, if you're, if you're a parent, you want your kids to go and approach the world from a confident place. Um, and so my mother was a very bold person out of necessity. Uh, early on, my brother was very sick and she just had to deal with doctors and surgeons and hospitals and everything. And she just powered through all of the barriers that they tried to put up against her. And then she became, uh, a life insurance salesperson. She was the first female life insurance salesperson in the state of Rhode Island. So you can imagine the barriers, uh, the gender barriers, the career barriers, all of that stuff. So, so she was bold. And so she was always pushing me deep into my discomfort zone. And it was, I was overdosed by it. So it made me retreat back into my shell. Um, and be, be much more socially anxious, afraid of meeting new people, afraid of making phone calls, uh, doing all of this stuff. It was a huge inhibitor in my life. And I had to untrain myself from that. So the, the, the idea is, uh, with the best of intentions, a parent can, can make a person an introvert or to behave in an introverted way. I really like to clear up this thing. When somebody says I'm shy, they're defining themselves by some of their behavior. They're not shy with their family. They're not shy with their friends. They're not shy at church. Probably they're shy with strangers or they're shy, you know, uh, in new situations. Um, and you know, and to label yourself an introvert is the same thing. Why do you, why do you have to be, why, why make it sound like it's genetic? It's not. You can learn to be as bold as you want to be. Mm. Mm. Let's talk a little bit more about this. Like there seems to be some sort of inner monologue. There seems to be some sort of self-imposed belief systems here. I mean, what's your take on the whole spectrum, introverted, extroverted, shy, confident, et cetera? If I had to zero it down to one word, it's about unworthiness. Mm. They, they have convinced themselves maybe from some outside input, that they are not worthy uh, of, of meeting new people. They're not interesting enough. They're not funny enough. They're not smart enough. They're not attractive enough. And of course, social media doesn't help. <laughs> you know, so it's even harder to be a teenager now than it ever was because there's, there's so much cruelty and negative feedback. Teenagers are cruel and always were, but now they can be really effectively cruel. Um, and so you have to develop this uh, thick skin that basically says, I'm going to limit the number of people whose opinions matter to me. Mm. Otherwise, you're worried about what everybody thinks. And, you know, the introvert is running this tape of like, like oh, they're, they're, you know, I'm going to be embarrassed. I don't know how to interact. I'm not that fun to be with. Uh, I just I like being alone. Well, guess what? We're human beings are. We, what we really are genetically is social. Okay. There is no genetic introvert or extrovert. There is, we, we are meant to survive by social interaction. That's why we have taken over the planet for, for good or for, for bad for the planet. But, but I mean, we we are, it's our interaction with each other that we need. I mean, people die of loneliness. They, 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 they can be so alone all the time and it, it's challenging now because 
again, so the, the digital world and social media makes it very easy to not actually interact with people, to do a, a false version of social behavior. I actually call it anti-social media because it's, it's not teaching you any social skills. And, and, and so a lot of what I want people to understand and, and stuff that's in my book is, is how to have a, a social interaction, how to meet anybody you want and have a normal conversation and be interested in them. And, 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 and that's how you get appreciated. And a lot of people don't realize how easy it is. Um, and they don't realize that, that boldness is a muscle that you build just like anything else, um, by taking bold action. And, and, you know, uh, early on, I like to tell the secret. A lot of people think, well, I would be bolder if I were more confident. That's why, you know, the introvert is saying, well, I'm not confident of doing anything but these things I'm comfortable with. Hmm. The reality is it doesn't take confidence to be bold. It takes boldness to build your confidence. Bold action is what builds your confidence. Bold people are not confident in all sorts of situations. They just choose to act anyway. Hmm. And what happens is the more you do it, the more you positive feedback you get from the world. Uh, and it builds your confidence. And so it gets to the point where uh, a bold person is much more comfortable trying and failing than not trying. They don't like not trying. And actually what happens to most people is when they hesitate and they miss opportunities, that's what gnaws at them, that they didn't speak up, that they didn't step up, that they didn't try something. Whatever it was, meeting somebody, asking for a promotion, starting your own business, uh, you know, somebody offers you a fun thing to do and you say, oh, I've never done that before. I don't want to do it. I might not do it right. You know, mm. it's uh, uh, like boldness don't bold individuals don't worry about being perfect. They know it's impossible. They just want to they want to live fully and they want to bring their full self to the world. You said something earlier about uh, when we were talking about social media, about picking and choosing whose opinion you care about. What, what are some steps you can give to the feel good fathers that are listening to cultivate that and then cultivate that in their families? Yeah, I would, I would actually sit down with your kid and say, whose opinion is really important to you? And, and let's make a list and then say, and rank them. Is, is, is this person a 10 out of a 10? Hopefully my, you, me and your mom, if you're, uh, we're, we're somewhere in the, in the nine, 10 zone that your opinion matters to us. Your best friend, your opinion matters. Maybe one or two of the teachers that you really like are a six or a seven. Other kids in the school, maybe four or five. Whole bunch of other kids are a zero. Let them be a zero and just, and realize this is, this is what, if you can, the way to help them understand it is say, we, all human beings walk around judging people all the time. We say, oh, that guy's beard looks funny. Or that guy needs to lose weight. That woman, you know, should never wear that dress. You know, like that we do this automatically without knowing the person. We see somebody drive, they cut us off, they go, oh, that guy's a freaking jerk. He's not really a freaking jerk, right? And one, he, he's probably not. He, there's like a dozen reasons why he could have cut you off. And two, he doesn't care if that's what you think. He doesn't know you and you don't know him. Hmm. So if we're doing it re without knowing people and we're wrong about 82% of the time, I'm wrong like 95 percent of the time with my first judgment because i learned as a shy person to really judge the heck out of people mm. um realize that other people are doing it too without knowing you so that if if you're if they have a judgment about you without knowing who you are why would you worry about what they think how does judgment uh sorry how does shyness lead to judgment uh because you're trying to protect yourself so it, it's a defense mechanism to say, I'm, I'm not interested in that person anyway, because they're stupid, 
uh, or they dress funny, or they're a snob, uh, or they're full of themselves. All, all of this stuff that that you say, I don't want to. I don't need to know that person. Hmm. So you you have you create judgments that that make it so you don't have to be social because you're so uncomfortable being social. It sound it sounds really close to they're they're more interested in being right than they are interested in in that interaction. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Do you want to be clever or do you want to be in relationships? Hmm. What are the con? So we talked about one consequence that people can die of loneliness. What are the other consequences of purposeful, either intentional, conscious or unconscious shyness? Uh, you, you're going to miss a lot of fun. You're going to miss some really good relationships and, and you're going to find life unsatisfying because you're going to start to stack regrets. I should have met that person. I should have asked this person out. Uh, I should have gone to that party. I should have joined that club or that team. Uh, and so that's, that's what motivated me more than anything else is I kept missing out on stuff because I hesitated because that's what the shyness causes you. Instead of acting, you hesitate. And what happens is the window of opportunity closes because it could just be a few seconds. It's like, Oh wow, look, it's Tom Hanks. I'd love to go talk to him, but I don't know what to say. And he's not going to be interested in me. And I, you know, and I, and, and, and like, I'm not wearing the right shirt and he's probably really busy and, and he's gone. Mm. Or you say, I'm just going to go tell him how much I appreciated all of his performances because they've really impacted me. I'm going to walk right up and say, it. I'm not going to necessarily be comfortable saying it. I'm going to go and say, Mr. Hanks, I just wanted to say, don't want to bother you. Just wanted to say how much I appreciated your performances over the years. It's really made a difference in my life. He's not going to say, get out of my face. He's going to say, thank you. But mostly what people do is they let the person go by and don't talk to them or they go over and try to get a selfie because that's pretending that they know Tom Hanks. It sounds like the great. So this is like um, really talking about the superficial versus the deep connection, right? Like the, there's this idea of um, this social media is, is the, we, we all know it's the highlights. It's the highlight reel of the day to day, right? There's 16 hours of waking moments in your day and they don't all look like that selfie on Instagram. <laughs> right. Right. And it's, and it's like, Oh, I have, uh, I have 180 friends or, you know, 5,000. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can probably maintain 10 good friends and probably only five really good friends. Mm -hmm. It's just not possible to maintain a good relationship. So uh, there was a movie many years ago with Bill Murray called Meatballs. And it was about summer camp uh, and all these kids at summer camp. And the most profound thing that came out of it was he's talking to this kid who's, who's feeling very isolated and, and, and lonely. And he says to him, look, if you make one good friend over the summer, that's a huge success. And that's true. That's life. You don't need 20 good friends. You don't need a hundred. You got five good friends in life. You got two good friends. You're wealthy. Mm. It's so interesting because today when I think about fathers out there, um, I think it's people that are above just men that are above the age of 30, uh, about 20 to 25% of them have one or fewer friends. So, and, and to me, like, I know it's not necessarily the numbers, but that feels like epidemic, uh, this epidemic of loneliness. And we know the consequences of that. So it's, it's very likely that some of the feel good fathers that are listening are just not in that in they're, Well, they're just in that place. They're not in that world where they've got these deep and meaningful connections and relationships. What are some things that they should pay attention to? And what are some things that they can do to, um, 
Well, in our estimation, having more connections, having more meaningful connections and conversations is an improvement in their life, an improvement in your life. So what are, what are a handful of things they can do to um, create more connections? I think, honestly, you're, we're at a point in life where you have to schedule it. Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. What happened to me and my brother, because we worked together for like 20 something years. So we were having lunch every day. Uh, and, and dinner with like all the executives, were, we would have Monday night, we would all go out to dinner together. And then my brother retired. And like two months went by and we hadn't seen each other. Mm. And we said, you know what, this is ridiculous. So we have to, we have to put it on the schedule Monday night, we're going out to dinner. And so now it's Monday night and Saturday lunch. So we see each other every week. And, and that, you know, quality time is, is how you build a friendship. And I think you have to say, who is it uh, that I, that matters to me? And have I done something to reach out and connect to them? Not a text, <laughs> not, you know, a, a, Hey, FaceTime's a great thing. You know, the zoom calls and FaceTime, these are wonderful ways that you're actually staying connected to people. Um, my nephew and I, we actually, we use the Oculus, uh, to play miniature golf together, uh, even though he's 3000 miles away and I get to talk to him while we're playing, you know, so it's, it's literally like we're, it's virtually, but literally like we're, we're, we're playing golf together and, and hanging out. It doesn't have to be deep. It doesn't have, you know, my brother and I on Monday nights, it's not it's some deep engaged conversation we're catching up with each other we're interested in what's going on in each other's lives and a lot of people what what happens to them is they become disinterested in people mm. and feel like their work is so important and their achievement is so important and their their aggregation of material stuff and 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 playing with their toys and stuff like that. And then watching infinite amounts of, of television and, and, and play, gaming and stuff like that. And it's, you, they, they stop being interested in the people that they care about mm. and those people feel it. That is one of the things that happens to a lot of fathers, a lot of young fathers as they're starting is there's this new role and creature in the world that's, that we're, that's under our care. And so there's this real, not only societal, but self-imposed pressure to keep providing, keep working, keep the house afloat, keep food on the table. Um, I can see it being really easy to fall into the trap of like, cause even I hit it sometimes with, with my new one, my, my new one's four months old. I've just, I got to keep working. I got to keep working. Got to keep working. And some days it's like, it hits, hits the end of my day. And I'm like, I've always, I've always got more work to do, but I'm walking out and trying to spend that time with my young daughter, with my old, my eldest and just doing that. What are, um, what are some, uh, so we've hit like the kind of the end point. And it's really easy to, when we're, when we're finally in the swamp, when we're finally like, you know, waist deep in the muck to realize, ah, oh, I've made some poor choices. What are some, what are some ways to kind of catch it in the act, hit a little bit earlier to, um, you know, kind of get back to the maintaining of these good, meaningful relationships. I think it, what I do is I start every day with, uh, I, I list three things I'm grateful for. Mm -hmm. And invariably it's reflecting on somebody that, that matters to me, mm. that I, I treasure their friendship, their care, their, their, uh, involvement in my life, how, how much the relationship has given me. Uh, I, I think if you don't reflect on the people and how much they matter to you, and, and what you can give them, are you offering them what you get from them? Mm. If you're not asking that, that's, that's when you have to check yourself. And you know, you're married too, right? And, and it's, it, we take our spouse for granted. It becomes the baseline. 
Um, and you have to actively push yourself out of that state on a regular basis to make a difference in the relationship, to sustain the relationship mm. and the health of it. So that same activity uh, that you would do when you're shy would be the same activity that you would do for your, for your spousal relationship. Yeah. It, well, I, not an activity, the same mindset, the same. Well, and, and it's sometimes it's, it's, it's the subtlest bit of behavioral uh, change. Um, it, it, you know, one of the principles of my book is everyday action, doing some bold action every day to build your boldness muscle. And so that when it matters, your boldness muscle is strong. When you do see that person you want to go over and meet, whether it's somebody famous or a great musician or just somebody you admire or somebody you just want to know, you, you've built your boldness muscle. So everyday action is powerful. And it's the same thing in any relationship. What, what little thing did I show my son or my daughter or my spouse that they really matter to me, hmm. that I've been thinking about them. And it's, and sometimes it's just the simplest little thing. It takes 10 seconds and we don't, it's like people, uh, the other example I use is people write an email so fast, they don't write a salutation or a, or a goodbye, right? It's like, blah, you know, a, 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 a non-grammatical eight words. And, and instead of, Thanks. <laughs> you know, I look forward to seeing you again. But like that takes an enormous amount of time. Um, and we just, we have all gotten to this. For, for everybody listening, that was sarcasm. <laughs> just because, just, because just so, I, I know Fred, uh, yes. but, but that was sarcasm. It, it takes no time to write that extra sentence or two, the one in the front to, to, pr to cue up your appreciation for the reader to state what it is you need and then to state that you're looking forward to the next interaction that takes no time. Okay. Keep yeah. going, Fred. <laughs> yeah. That's, I mean, that's, and that's, you know, you know, this, the same person that says, I don't have time for that will find themselves trapped, uh, trolling Instagram for 45 minutes. Right. It's like, Oh yeah. What, what, but you couldn't, you couldn't, you know, uh, do the one thing that your wife wishes you would do, which is take your coffee cup out of the sink and rinse it off and wipe it down. You can't do that. Um, cause you can't get to, I don't have time, honey. I don't have time for, to clean up the house. Really? What are you doing right now? <laughs> mm -hmm. So, and we so, all do it. I mean, it, but it, you, you gotta be self-aware. Pay attention to how you're spending your time. Yeah. Got it. What are some common things uh, when it comes to trying to teach our kids to be bold? What are some common things that happened? I think that if, if you develop uh, a, an understanding that failure is how you get better, it's like everybody, the, the greatest people at everything sucked at it when they started. Now, some were more talented. They got along faster and, 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 and achieved more. But the really successful athletes like the Kobe uh, 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 Bryants, they were incredibly talented and also got up at 3.30 in the morning and, and would practice the fundamentals. Mm -hmm. So it, it's everybody that achieves something has it makes sacrifices somewhere else but they all start by failing. They miss free throw shots over and over again till they hit them. And, it, and so it's the same thing in social life. Say, look, you're, you're going to try to meet people. You're going to try to hang out. You're going to try to be funny. You're going to do all this stuff and it's not going to go right. You know what? Stop. You don't have to take it on as a permanent scar. You can just say, Hey, I don't need to be embarrassed. They laughed at me. Hey, I made them laugh. Not so bad. Right. Embarrassment is a choice. And if you can help them to understand that you, you can make another choice, 
than feeling embarrassed or humiliated. You can just say, wow, I'm, I'm still learning. I got to get better at this. But that was, you know, failure is information. If you can just, if you can get them to get over that and just realize that, that rejection is, has got almost nothing to do with you. And you don't need everybody to love you. And it's like, it would be impossible to have everybody loving you. That's, that's take a lot of time. So Talk a focus little on a fulfilling, you know, a satisfying life and being a better you and, and know that there's going to be bumps and grinds along the way. There's going to be situation. Nobody's perfect, but, but introverts try to pretend that they are. They only want to do things that they're going to be perfect at so that nobody thinks that they're not perfect. It's a, it, you know, so stop worrying about being perfect and start trying stuff. What are some ways, um, that we suppress boldness in our kids? Uh, a lot of parents, they're so worried about the child experiencing any sort of emotional hurt that they protect them by saying, no, I'll talk to them. I'll do this for you. I'll, I'll meet that, but I'll, I'll call the parents and arrange the play date for you. And instead of saying, w would you like Tom to come over? I, I think you need to call his dad and say, can Tom come over? Mm. And, and so instead we, we do stuff for them everywhere and they don't develop any social skills and they don't develop any boldness muscles. So, you know, Put them in challenging situations. And when they fail, sit down with them and say, how did that feel? Oh, that felt terrible. Yeah. Do you need to hang on to it, though? Mm. What are you going to do next time? What would you learn from it? Because this is how you get better is you, you stumble and you bumble till you get some rhythm. I like that. <laughs> like that. You stumble and you bumble till you get some rhythm. That's, that's really good. Um, what, what are other, some, what are some other things that we can, uh, as feel good fathers, right. That we can, um, use to, uh, develop our own boldness. What are some common situations? And then what are some other things we can do? Other really, really great ways to develop this, this muscle in, you know, spouses in, in our kids. Uh the the basic thing is l notice when you're trying to stay in your comfort zone and deliberately push yourself out of it but the easiest way to do it is talk to strangers talk to a stranger every day mm -hmm. and the, and the easiest way to talk to a stranger every day is to compliment that stranger mm -hmm. and if you can teach your kids to do that if you can teach them to be a positive influence in high school and just say it's just be you're cool because everybody knows you got something nice to say about them instead of being cool because you get the most sarcastic thing or the most cutting thing or the most critical thing or the most cruel thing mm. instead say you know those those glasses look great on you you know uh, i wish i needed glasses <laughs> you know you, you stay you, and you and you do it without trying to get anything in return, except to make them feel good. If you, it, and you know, as adults, we, we, we can get trapped in trying to be comfortable all the time too. I don't want to feel uncomfortable. I don't want to fail at anything. And the reality is the only way to lead a fulfilling life and chase your dreams is by a series of failures that mm -hmm. bold people look as failures as a stairway up. Whereas shy and introverted people and most people look at failures as a way to retreat and never try it again. So look at where you're, look at, if I were talking to somebody who said, you know, I, I really want, I, I would have liked to have been blank. Uh, I would have liked to have coached Little League, but, you know, you know, you can, I, you know, when people say I, I want to be in the NBA, it's like, okay, let's, let's be realistic. You're, you're five, two. Right. So, but, but I mean, you can still be involved in, in basketball in all sorts of ways. 
but you, if you have this thing that you're afraid of failing at, and a lot of times it comes with, oh, I hate the idea of public speaking. Do you hate it or are you just afraid of it, but would like to do it? Then it means you have to do it. You have to find a way to start doing it because what you're afraid of is, is all, what you're afraid of failing at tells you what you really would like to do. Very That's interesting. Hmm. That's a great indicator of like when they say, ah, oh, it's like, yeah. And, and then you see them, I would never like to speak in public. And then you see them in the coffee room at, at the business and they've got everybody's attention telling them a story. Cause, and they love the fact that everybody's listening to them. So it's like, yeah, I think you kind of want to be a public speaker, <laughs> mm. you know, and, and also just understand yourself and for your kids to understand your ability to stand up in front of people and communicate effectively is a is probably the most powerful life skill that that will carry you forever there's a bunch of other things there's all sorts of skills that we can learn that might or might not be useful three years from now or five years from now or ten years from now that will carry you all your days your ability to get up in front of people and communicate your ideas effectively and your ability to meet anybody you want also, because that's, that's, it's the same thing. Mm. It's saying I'm, I'm putting myself out there. I am worthy enough and I'm willing to take that risk and know that not everybody's going to love me and not everybody's going to hate me. And I'm going to, I'm going to, but I'm going to impact somebody. If I give a lecture and one person comes up after me and says, this is what I've needed to hear for 15 years. Thank you. I'm fine. I don't care if the other 500 people don't say anything to me or think I'm an idiot because I got through to one person when they needed it. I was right there for that person at that moment when they needed me. That's, that's all I need. That's the only gratification I need. I'm not getting everybody. I'm not getting a standing ovation that every, half of a standing ovation is the other half of the people saying, I guess I got to stand up too. So don't, don't believe it and don't worry about it if it doesn't happen. Hmm. Pay attention to the voices that um, that are meaningful in your life. Uh, go out there, communicate your ideas effectively, meet whoever it is you want in your life, and then make sure that you have the appropriate metrics in place. So the, the correct North star, so that you're uh, looking for the right kind of reward. I was going to say validation, but that's not correct. I want to use that word. The right kind of reward, the right kind of impact in what it is that you're doing. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Fred, if folks want to get a hold of you, how can they do that? Fredjoyle.com. Fred it's the easiest way. Then uh, my books are on Amazon in Kindle um, and Audible uh, and hardcover. Awesome. So you can get super bold uh, in whatever format you want. Awesome. Fred Joyle, everybody. So if you thought this was interesting, you need to subscribe to get this content on a regular basis. That means that button, that button right there, just push it and subscribe. Oh, thanks, Fred. And also right about here is the next video from YouTube. YouTube has decided that this one right here, right here is the next video that you should watch. I know it's going to be one of mine and it's going to have a big impact in your life.